Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank you today. We give you praise and honor. We open our hearts and we open our minds to receive divine information, revelation from you, sir, concerning our lives on this earth. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. It's very important all the time, but especially this week, you need to go to kcm.org slash notes and download the notes from this broadcast. There's some very, very, very unusual and interesting things that are going to happen all this week long. And let me tell you why. Dr. Don Colbert's here. Would you join me in welcoming him? Doc, it's good to have you on here, man. Oh, it's great being it's, here. I, I, I just enjoy being in your company. And, I, you know, as you have learned over the number of years we've been, I just start picking at you the minute, <laughs> the minute I get you in tow where I can learn and find out things. And I got you again for a whole week. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's go in our Bibles to Genesis 6, and we're going to read the, the third verse, Genesis 6, 3. Now, am I reading from the Bible? Yes, I am. Verse 3, the Lord said, My spirit will not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and 20 years. Now, the New Living Translation says he is only flesh. Well, now that's very important because this, no, nobody got born again until after Jesus came and went to the cross and paid the price for that. So now you're dealing with, with uh, a, a dead spirit man, or just make it simple, a spirit man is disconnected from God right. and his spirit. But then in he said, <clears throat> the New Living said, his normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. And now he's already said he's only flesh. Right. So he's, got getting, he's not getting any spiritual help out of this much. That's right. But, but his normal lifespan, you know, no more than 120 years, means he should be living up, up, up to the end of that vicinity instead of a three 70. score and 10 or That's so. True. Now, here's what, I, here's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm so excited about you being here. The elements, if, if God said this, and he did, and this is his word, and it is, it's just as much his word as by his stripes you were healed. And, and as you know, this, this has really, really marked my life. That, and God, the God dealt with me about this because he said, there are anointings in, in the light of this that I plan to be in the earth from 80, 90, 100, 110, 115. And he said, they're not there and I don't have the benefit of them. Well, he said, he asked me, he said, did you have the same anointing when you were 30, when you began, as you had when you were 50? No, no, no. Well, it was the same anointing. The base was the same. Sure. But the experience and the, the, the revelation, knowledge, and so forth coming along. Now, here's my point today, Dr. Colbert. God said that. That is his plan and his word. Now, all of the spiritual elements, all of the intellectual elements, and all of the physical elements, including our food and so forth, he, since he said that, he has to be obligated to provide all spirit, soul, and body that it takes to carry this out. That's right. Now, 
<laughs> if we don't get those three elements in line, spirit, soul, and body, you're not going to make this. That's true. Not even going to get close. And uh, I talked to, uh, <clears throat> I was talking to uh, uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf the uh, day before yesterday, and, and the mental statistics now are just dire because it, it, it's reversing. We've got a generation of people that started dying younger. That's right. And their mental, their mental food and their physical food and their spiritual food is killing them. Right. Well, they're getting diseased at younger and younger ages. We have epidemics occurring here in this country and throughout the world, primarily obesity epidemic, that belly fat, and that's causing an, a type 2 diabetes epidemic as well as an Alzheimer and dementia epidemic. So we're I just seeing... had the Lord say, now, now, now get with me right now. Don't you get offended by some of this. That <clears throat> our emotions are part of our soul and we are supposed to be in command of those. If Satan can get you offended, what did Jesus say? The sower sows the word. That's right. This is the group that gets offended and the devil steals the word. That's right. Now, Father, we thank you yes. and we stand together Dr. Colbert's been through this. I've been through this and you're going through it today and we're going to come out of this so strong the devil will hate to see you coming down the road. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it all starts with the food <clears throat> test. That's what I tell patients. The food test. Have you passed the food test? Now, Adam and Eve failed the fir first food test and they ate of the tree of good and evil, knowledge of good and evil. And in doing so, they infected the whole human race with sin and a guilt consciousness because Adam and Eve, after eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they, they saw that they were naked and they felt guilty. And uh, that's the thing that by not passing the first food test, it invites sin into our body. Now, Jesus, he passed the first food test. And it's interesting in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, if you just turn over that, it's a real powerful verse. And most people aren't aware of this, but this is showing us that Jesus is coming. This was hundreds of years before Jesus came. This prophecy came from Isaiah. And it says in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Now, this is the Virgin Mary and bear a son, that's Jesus, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then verse 15, curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. In other words, by learning to choose the right foods, he's able to refuse evil and choose good. And then you read about the food test that Jesus passed in Matthew chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to explain, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And it says afterwards he was hungry. And then Satan came, the tempter, the deceiver, the accuser came to Jesus and said, if you be the son of man, he said, turn these stones into bread. And how did Jesus reply? With the word of God. Yeah, he did. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the word of God. He responded and he passed the food test. He put the word before his own food. Right. Actually, it's true. At, a, at, at the point of starvation, I mean, that's as, tough as, that's as tough as that test could get. That's right. It's not a Twinkie test. I mean, this is as tough as it could get. Exactly. He had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then Satan comes, if you be the son. He's playing on that's that. Right. He is. Man. It's in his weakest moments. Yeah. See, he's coming and tempting him with most likely his favorite food, which was bread. Hot baked rolls, bread. And so Jesus passed the food test, but what is happening today, the church is failing the food test at almost every meal. And in doing so, we are inviting disease into our bodies. And it's literally, uh, in doing this, it's almost impossible to reach 120 years that we're promised. It's kind of like the owner's manual for a car. It says this car, like a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce, is good for a million miles. 
Now, some American-made cars, maybe 100,000, you know, <laughs> or they have to, after 50,000, they start having problems. And a lot of people will sell their car before 50,000 miles. But this body that we have, according to the owner's manual, which is the Word of God, yeah. this mm -hmm. body is designed to last 120 years. But if we never put the right type of food in, or if we only rarely put the right type of food in, it's kind of like taking your car, never changing the oil, Mm -hmm. never getting it serviced, mm -hmm. and as a result, you destroy the engine or the heart. The heart is the number one cause of death, heart disease in this country, followed closely behind by cancer. We're seeing an epidemic of these diseases. Doctor, I tell you, uh, I don't remember a time in this ministry of 49 years that I have prayed for so many people, I'm talking about friends of mine, people that, that are strong, strong in God with cancer. Right. And it, it is just, well, I am really stirred up about it. That ought not be happening. Well, what is happening, again, it goes back to what foods are we consistently choosing to eat? Because just like Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever seed you sow, that you shall also reap. He who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, cancer, heart disease, there it is. arthritis. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So what is happening when people are eating Unfortunately, when they sit down to eat, they are not choosing life by choosing living food and God's foods. They are choosing death by choosing man-made artificial foods or processed foods or sugary foods or highly inflammatory foods that are inviting death and disease into the body. And that's what's happening. It's a, uh, it's a seed sown and a disease reaped by consistently choosing the wrong foods. That's what's happening. And again, much of these bad choices are due to the stress so many people are under because these comfort foods make you feel better. Sugar makes you feel better. Starches make you feel better. Creamy ice cream and, uh, you know, fried foods and French fries. These are comfort foods that make you feel better for a short period of time but are inviting disease into the body. And they're wreaking havoc on these appetite hormones in our body. See, the appetite hormones... There are two key appetite hormones that most people don't realize. And if you don't balance these hormones, you're going to unleash a ravenous appetite that is almost, mm. it's almost impossible to control, for the flesh to control it. It's like trying to bridle a wild horse, a bucking horse, you know? It's hard to bridle this flesh when these appetite hormones are not balanced. And the very thing that triggers this imbalance of the leptin and the ghrelin, see the leptin, once the leptin levels are high, it turns off your appetite. But if ghrelin levels are high, it turns on your appetite. It's like an accelerator and a brake. So we have to balance these two hormones. Well, what throws off the balance of these hormones so severely? Eating sugar, highly processed foods, sodas, fructose and high fructose corn syrup unleashes these uh, tremendous appetite hormones that cause us to just crave food. And, it, and we can eat until we're full, yet five minutes later, we're hungry again. Mm -hmm. Another thing that does it and that uh, so many women are guilty of is not eating adequate amounts of protein. And uh, like a woman, like my wife, for instance, she used to be guilty of this. And I'd say, you got to have a little protein with that carbohydrate. She would eat pancakes or uh, some, a big stack of pancakes in the morning with syrup and not have any protein. Just eating all those carbohydrates by themselves, again, causes this imbalance in these appetite hormones. But by simply adding protein to it, adding fiber, good soluble and insoluble fiber, it helps to balance these appetite hormones. So stress also will imbalance these hormones. So that's why I go in detail of how to balance these hormones. If you don't balance these hormones, you're not gonna get this flesh under control. You've got a runaway flesh and a runaway appetite and it's gonna lead you right to the wrong foods that invite disease into this body. Mm. So we have specific ways on how to balance these. One of the best ways is if you eat every four hours. The way this ghrelin appetite hormone, when it's low, it just, the appetite goes haywire, goes crazy. But it's on a four hour cycle. 
So by simply eating every four hours, even if it's a healthy snack, it turns this hormone, this appetite hormone down significantly. So just simple things that we can incorporate will balance and control these hormones so we don't have a runaway appetite. Now, the <clears throat> where faith comes in is th th this is a critical part of this whole plan. You know, this, the, the scripture says he's damned if he eats without faith because whatever doesn't come from faith is sin. So if, if, if the, and, and this is, this is what I see all the time. You eat anything you want to eat, anytime you want to eat it. And then when you get sick, call me and want me to pray. <laughs> well, thank God. I, and, and, and I'm, and I'm talking about, <clears throat> and, and actually I've done this myself and I've had the Lord correct me on it. He said, now in the first place, you knew better than to eat that. And you did it anyway. Now you got the results of it. Now you're trying to use your faith and your faith is feeble because you know what you did. And now the condemnation of it is, is working in, in the wrong side of the, the spirit uh, spectrum. Because then you get into guilt, shame, and blame, yeah, and, and that, stress. And that's all fear-based, and it's, it's all fear working. So you've contaminated your faith once you've done. But then when you come over, he said, first thing you need to do is take the proper process, repent, take care of that, and then go to the Word. Don't just do it on the run. Go get in the Word of God and do what you know to do to get healed of what that caused. Absolutely. But now if you just keep doing that, just keep doing that, keep, just keep doing that over and over and over, you can get in every prayer line between here and, and the North Pole and you're going to have a hard time receiving because I, I had the Lord point this out to me, Doc. He mm -hmm. said, now, you knew the anointing left you. I said, yes, sir. He said, you knew it went into them, didn't it? I said, yes, sir, it did. He said, the problem is, even when my anointing is working to heal that man's knees, or whatever else, what I'm thinking about was his mm -hmm. knees. Sure. And um, he said, even while it's working there, he continues to do what caused the problem. Mm -hmm. That's true. And he said it won't be long until his faith is, he, he's paying more attention to the pain now than, he, than before. So the process is now the anointing has waned and you're still applying the same problem. That's right. And they get stuck in guilt. And even though many times they repent, yet they don't receive forgiveness. Oh, I know, that's true. And yeah. they get stuck in it, and then they tend to crave, like for arthritis, for example, they tend to crave the very food that invites the disease into the body. For example, let's talk about some foods real quick that invites arthritis into the body, fried foods. A lot of these people with arthritis of the knees, the hands, they get these bumps on their fingers mm -hmm. right here, the DIP joints, they're craving fried foods, they're craving dairy products, that's a major trigger for osteoarthritis, as well as the nightshades. And nightshades are vegetables that many people think are very healthy, which they are for a lot of people, but for those individuals with osteoarthritis, they're many times, about 50% of the time, highly inflammatory, and they fuel the arthritis pains. And they're tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, especially cayenne pepper, jalapeno pepper, habanero peppers, bell peppers, paprika, and eggplant. Those that sounds are, like you've described an acidic diet. That is, that is. Is that what, is that what we're... That's an acidic diet, but these are special types of plants that are infl highly inflammatory for people with certain diseases. And it's interesting that the people that have these diseases, like arthritis, I had psoriasis years ago. I was craving salts and peppers and tomatoes. I didn't know that that was triggering inflammation in my body. And so that's why I had to, in order to heal my body of the psoriasis, I had to lay on the altar Gluten, which is in wheat, my two main thorns were gluten and nightshades. Hmm. And I thought nightshades were healthy. Tomatoes have lycopene. 
but for my body, they were inflaming the body. And that's, what, that's why I wrote this book, because many times the very food you crave is your thorn that is inviting disease into your body. My, my, my. Praise God. <laughs> well, we're, number one, we got a dying world all the way around us. Number two, we've got a nation that's crying out to God on one side. Judgment has come right. on the other side. And here we are, God's army, broken down, mm. hurting. We're, we're being expended in the same areas that the world around us is, and we're not doing a thing in the world to help them. We're in trouble ourselves. Right. So what, what, what I know that's happened to glory in me is God has just set us down and said, now look, you, you're, you're part of the answer, not the problem. Now you're going to have to minister this. Amen. You're going to have to get straight and strong about it and let people know that these things are not optional with me, saith the Lord. <laughs> it's, it, he plans on you taking care of this body. Why? To use it to minister to the body of Christ and to the world. Well, we can't, again, when I was in med school, I, was, I had a heat stroke, suffered a massive heat stroke and massive rhabdomyolysis of my muscles. And they said I'd never walk again, but that's a whole different story. But that was back in 1982. They biopsied my, mus my muscle and my thigh, and they said from the surface of the muscle all the way to the bone, it is necrosis to the bone or dead. You'll never walk again. Now, if I had taken that report and believed it, the devil wanted to knock my feet out yeah. from under me, and I'd have been in a wheelchair. Who would have listened to me in a wheelchair? So many Christian ministers are out there suffering from heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, morbid obesity, and the world's not going to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Why do they want to mm -hmm. hear from them? So that's why we need to be examples, modern-day Daniels that have wisdom, that have tremendous, vibrant health and energy and enthusiasm and passion. That's what we need, and that's what God is looking for. I don't care what, who, where, or why. Somebody's in that wheelchair. You can get out of there now. But it takes commitment. It, it, takes, a, it takes growing a thick spiritual skin. <laughs> I had one fellow <laughs> in these last few seconds. He was, he was a Jewish businessman. Mm -hmm. He said, Kenneth, I've been called everything you can imagine. <laughs> Because <laughs> and being Jewish, you know, mm -hmm, sure. you know what he's referring to. But he said, you know what? I've never been insulted. Praise God. Because he said, the moment I <laughs> accept mm -hmm. that insult, now I'm in trouble. That's right. And he said, it'll affect my my life. It'll affect my business. Amen. It will affect my family. Now, now get hold of what he just said. Satan uses all these kinds of things. Well. He talked about me being in a wheelchair. Well, he talked about me being too fat. Well, he, come on, come on, get thicker than that. Get stronger than that. There's nothing in this world order that faith won't overcome. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Be sure to get the notes at kcm.org notes. And remember, Jesus is Lord.